This next part talks about how we structure our presentations. This is something I wish I had known when I was in architecture school and something that we use in virtually all of our presentations now. In a 2009 TED Talk by Simon Sinek, he outlines a common thread shared by all inspiring leaders and businesses. The simple truth is that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. The why is the thing that people gravitate towards. While most companies are busy explaining what their product or service is, the elite leaders like Steve Jobs start with the why. Sinek points out that less inspiring companies will start with the what, then the how, then the why. The what is we produce great computers. How? They're beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Want to buy one? So Sinek goes on and illustrates how Apple's pitch is the opposite. They start with the why. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? It's much more effective. In the design world, starting with the why will help a client or customer embark on a journey with you in which they feel they're a participant, not merely a recipient. They will feel sympathetic to your cause because they feel that it's their cause. Starting a presentation by explaining your design philosophy, or the reason, which in Greek is the word logos, this will fundamentally flip the audience from being a critic to a participant. Why does this happen? Well, if I start a presentation by revealing the design first, the what, I shock the audience. Then if I go into the how, then the why, I'm giving the impression that I'm trying to justify and post-rationalize what I just presented. I'm playing defense. The viewer was surprised by the design, forming an immediate opinion, either good or bad, then will feel like my justifications are trying to sell the idea. Nobody wants to feel like they're being sold something. They want to feel like they've designed it themselves or better yet, they've discovered it for themselves. If, however, I start a presentation with my why, my design philosophy, my inspiration, the vision, that aha moment, at this point, the audience can't disagree with that. They can't argue with the fact that I was inspired by the motion of a fish, a Frank Geary example or the explosion of energy when firefighters leap into action, Zaha's Vitra fire station. That moment of inspiration is something they inherently buy into because it's theoretical, it's intangible. Then as your presentation takes them on a journey to the how, such as we sculpted the facade of the building based on the movement uh, gestures of a fish, or we distorted the planes of the building to exaggerate the sense of perspective and energy, they're now following your logic. So that by the time you deliver the what, they've already designed the project in their mind based on your explanation. And since the what that you're revealing matches the what they've already conceived based on your description, they believe in it because they feel like it's their own. They're no longer a consumer, but a creator. To be able to give someone that gift of taking ownership of the design process in some way is an extraordinary, uh, extremely powerful tool. This is true for presentations, for arguments, persuasive writing, and more. So always follow that outline of why, how, and then what.